Hello, my friend. Welcome to Daily Faith. Today, my name is Philip Cameron, and we are so glad you have come alongside us for a wee while to have your spirit and your faith challenged. Something happens in your life when God comes into your situation and, and stirs you to do something bigger than you've ever dreamed of before. If you don't have a challenge in your life, listen to me, if you don't have a faith challenge in your life, if you don't have something that keeps you awake at night, something that stirs you to believe God for stuff you don't have, what happens is your world shrinks, things atrophy, things begin to, 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 to fold in on themselves. And God has a way of bringing stuff into your life, the most random, crazy things into your life. And I know I'm watching someone right now who maybe is going through that exact situation. And you're thinking, oh my gracious, you know, this crisis. I've learned in my life, most of the crises I've faced have been dis is, has been God disguising an opportunity and watching how I react. Most of the miracles I've experienced in my life has been when we've had to start in the cold dead of night. And you haven't had the resources and you haven't had the funds and you haven't had the manpower and you haven't had everything. And something inside you says, stand up, get up, believe me. And that's what makes God stand up. And I don't know why I'm saying this, but there's someone watching just now. You're going through a battle and a storm and you're thinking, oh my goodness, you know, what's happened to me? Why is this happening to me? Let me tell you why it is. Because God wants you to grow. God wants you to grow. If you go to Scotland, up in the highlands of Scotland, wind, you have never, Americans think of a hurricane, you know, 70 miles an hour. That's a breezy day back home in Scotland. And if you go up to the highlands, you'll see these trees and the highlands are barren. Miles and miles, heather grows, purple heather. So in September, you can see as far as you can see, the hills are purple with heather, stunningly beautiful. But the trees is a different story. And um, if you're driving along the, the road, you'll see the odd tree, and they're maybe like eight or ten feet tall tops. And they're stripped most of the leaves because the leaves have been blown off, and they're leaning one direction into the wind. But I'll promise you this, if you dig up around that tree, you'll discover its roots go down 30 feet because the storm makes roots grow. And in your circumstance, I can use for you, the storm is making your roots grow. And once the storm passes you'll be able to have burrowed down into the rich reservoir of God's grace and mercy and supply. So don't you dare quit. Don't you dare quit. God is on your side today. And uh, we are just so delighted. I've got a, a great man of God on our program today. Grace, uh, Rick Long from Grace Church in Colorado, Arvada, <coughs> excuse me, Arvada, Colorado. And he's written a book it's like a de devotional. It's, it's, I don't know how to describe it. I'll let him describe it, but it's a, an important book that I think you need to get a hold of in your life because the reason why I do daily faith is because you've got to be nudged and nudged and provoked and thought of and, 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 and polished and moved every day. Otherwise, you just become a stone. A diamond is a lump of coal. That's all a diamond is, a lump of coal. Pressurized and pressurized in the darkness. No one's seeing it. Pressurized, pushed. And then it's discovered, and then it's cut and, and polished. And we look at a diamond on a, a woman's finger and think, wow, what a beautiful thing. You have no idea what that diamond went through to get on that finger. And you're going through the same situation. We're all going through the same situation. But I'm telling you now, His grace is sufficient for you. And um, so we are just so excited that you could join us today. Please call someone. If you love your pastor, if you love your pastor, Call him today and say there's a pastor on who has written a book that you need to get. <coughs> Excuse my voice. Every Monday we have a program on CTN. And what we do is we do five shows a week here on, on um, social media. And then we take the best of those five shows and we put them on CTN. And uh, it's every, every Monday night at 9 o'clock. And we would love you to join us. It's on channel 376 on DirecTV Dish. It's channel 262, and if you want to go, or to, if you're watching Glory Star Television, channel 117. And um, just hook up with us, get, get in contact with us, get, get connected to what we're doing, because I think some exciting things God is doing in our lives and our ministry. When I'm not sitting here doing daily faith, when I'm not traveling and speaking in churches, 
all over the world. Uh, my heart's passion, the thing I love to do, the thing that gives me the uh, satisfaction of my life is what God's allowed us to do for 33 years in Eastern Europe. 33 years ago, I was sitting in my house in Montgomery, Alabama. I was in my mid-30s. I'd been on most of the t big TV shows. I'd written a book that had sold 3 co uh, 300,000 copies. Sorry, I'd preached on household salvation on Huntley Street and had 3 million names of unsaved loved ones called in for salvation. I was on the Richard Robber program, a million names called in for household salvation. I was living in a gorgeous house. I, everything, every bucket list, everything. I traveled all over the world. I'd been done, got, and I was empty. What next? And one day the phone rang. It was my dad calling me from Scotland. And he says, I'm watching the BBC. He's broadcasting. And he says that our baby's dying. And I says, what on earth are you talking about? I had no idea that that phone call changed my life. And let me suggest something to you. Keep a phone handy in your life, will you? Keep a phone handy so God can get a hold of you. Because sometimes you cut the lines of your phone and you're, you're sitting and you're waiting for God to talk to you and you're thinking, why isn't God talking? He'll only talk to people who are waiting to hear him. And I had no idea that day that phone call would change my life. And he said that our baby's dying. I says, what in the name of heavens are you talking about? He just had cancer surgery. The wounded burst. And he was sitting with a brace on his back so he couldn't twist his back anymore. And he called me and he, and, and, and he says, look, he says, what, what, do you, what, what can we do? And my dad had a motto in life, um, why have a dog and bark yourself? He got the vision, I got the job. That was how we've always worked. And he's been in heaven for 22 years and I'm still doing, I'm still woofing. <laughs> he's still got me doing what I'm doing. And uh, I, I said, says, I says, well, I'll, I'll, send, I'll send the Red Cross $100. So the next night he called me. There are babies dying. I said, you told me that yesterday. Nothing's changed. Leave me alone. You're sick. I'm busy. Don't do this. Weeping on the phone. And uh, the next night he called me and he says, I, I can't sit. I can't stand this. I'm watching these babies dying. We've got to do something about it. I'm saying, Dad, stop it. We don't need this stuff in our lives. We've got a Bible school. We've got ministry here. We don't. We don't, don't. I had no interest in no involvement in, in orphan ministry. A lot of times I thought they were used as a, like, like a, a gimmick or a, a reason to raise money for not really doing any work. That was my honest to God gut feeling about it. So he called me one day on the Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. He says, I'm going. I said, what do you mean you're going? He says, I'm going, to, I'm going to Romania by myself. And if I die on the way, it's your fault. And I said, oh, please stop it. And that's how I started 33 years ago. And I flew home and the, the local press, cancer-stricken pastor to go to, to, to Romania. And our town gave us hundreds of tons of stuff. And what started out, him and I going in a van ended up a, a bunch of trucks going. And um, that was 200 trips ago. And uh, the second visit there, I found in a, in a room upstairs, a wee boy standing amongst 30 other kids. S screaming kids, rocking in their cribs because they'd never been cuddled by their mom. And this little face is looking at me. This little boy standing there, naked from the waist down, covered in his own waist. And the Holy Ghost spoke and said, that's your son, just like I'm talking to you. That's your son. And I said to my dad, I said, Dad, look at that wee boy. He said, oh, he's a bonny boy, a, a pretty boy. I said, no, I said, God wants me to adopt him. Now, what's funny about that is I'd only, I, I had two kids, Chris and I had two kids of our own. And I was done having kids. I, mean, I preached about having only two kids because you can't educate them properly. You can't spend time with them. Two kids. And uh, here was me standing in this orphanage crying over this little baby in my arms. And I had no idea that God was making me hold by proxy hundreds, thousands of other babies. And um, that's been our life's work. So what we do now, we, we now live and work in a country called Moldova and Ukraine. You may have heard Ukraine recently in the news. In Moldova, in the news, we were there when no one else knew where Moldova is, the poorest country in Europe. Poorest country in Europe. 490,000 refugees have swamped that country. And uh, what happened was I got to, to, to Moldova and, and uh, we rebuilt a couple of orphanages there, rebuilt them. I'm not talking about painting the walls, rebuilt them. New systems, new plumbing, new heating, new roof, new windows, everything. And uh, I, 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 when I do something for the kingdom of God, I do it as if Jesus were going to be staying in the building. And boy, that's a different set of standards completely. 
And uh, so I, 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 one day we, we put uh, 391 windows in the largest orphanage in, in Moldova. And there's 18 kids, girls sitting on this bench outside. And, and the director says, they all must go. I says, where are they going? He says, um, I don't know. And when a girl turned 16 in those days, they were put on the street. And traffickers got them. Tens of thousands of them. 30 to 50 times a day they were used by these guys. One trafficked girl can make $300,000 a year for her captor. One girl. Three girls, a million dollars. And I got two daughters of my own. I just, I, I, I couldn't, I could not do something. So we've been caring and helping. We take these kids as orphans and they come to us and we put them back in school and tell them if you're born, God has a plan. You're not a mistake. I don't care what they've been telling you. And in the orphanage, they're told you're garbage, you're nothing, your mother doesn't want you, your father doesn't want you. Nothing plus nothing will always be nothing. Just, it's, it's brutal. And uh, we now have a place called Vatra Village. And these kids, there you go, that's Vatra Village on the lake. It was built for rich folk on the, in the largest lake in all of Moldova. And uh, they poisoned the lake with, with chlorine, trying to kill algae. And those houses sat, and we bought them and uh, built, rebuilt them completely. Beautiful homes. They're as nice a home. In fact, they're nicer than my own home. Because I am convinced that if he's the father of the fatherless, how, how we prov provide for them... Is do, you're doing it to Jesus as you've done on the least of them, you've done unto me. So they come to us and we put them back into school and um, we are seeing some ridiculous things take place. Um, one of our girls just a few weeks ago graduated to be a doctor. Another one became a psychologist and these kids are becoming leaders and, and, and shakers and movers in the country and we are astonished to see what's happened. A few years ago, six, seven years ago, my wife and I were coming back from Moldova and when we went through immigration in Atlanta, the guy says, uh, immigration officer says, where have you been? I says, Moldova. He says, Moldova? I says, yeah. He says, that's crazy. He says, I've just transferred up from the Caribbean. I says, yeah. He says, yeah. He says, what's crazy is we intercepted a, a container, a 40-foot container shipped from Odessa in Ukraine down to the Caribbean, and there was 38 Moldovan girls inside from, from Ukraine, from Odessa. Go check on the map how far Odessa is from the Caribbean. It will blow your mind. And I walked out and I'm standing waiting for my, my bags and I, and I was quiet. And Chris says, does that mean we're going to Ukraine? I said, you bet. So we've had a house there for years in Ukraine and had no idea that we would be put right in the middle. I'm not, I haven't gone to Ukraine because it's the hot spot for ministries to go to. We've been there for decades. We've been in, in Moldova and Ukraine and Romania for 33 years. In fact, we've had to remove our girls from Ukraine to Moldova to keep them safe. And uh, we are just, we are, there's some stuff that's come up in the last few hours that is blowing my mind that I can't, it's so big I can't even articulate it properly yet. I'm trying to assimilate it in my mind. I didn't sleep much last night just thinking over and over again what's happening. But when the invasion happened and these refugees ran from the Russian bombs and shells and tanks and soldiers who are killing and raping women every day. Our kids, these orphan kids, that part of their healing process is that we send them out to care for widows and they, they cook meals and they deliver meals. I mean, that's what we, for years we've been doing this. So when the refugees came to the border, our kids had already been doing it. It wasn't a new thing to do. And they just moved everything up to the border and started loving and caring for the refugees that were coming across. Many of them in those days, it was thick snow, blizzards, and the most barren, cold place you've ever seen in your life. And our kids were there right at the point. Orphans became sons and daughters. And sons and daughters became missionaries. And that, to me, is the greatest thing of all. Now they're going back into Ukraine at great risk. Other, we've just had a team come back two nights ago. And as they lay in their bed at night, they could hear the thud of Russian shells. And I, I, I said to one of the girls, Nadia, I said, Nadia, I says, aren't you afraid? She says, Dad, I died in an orphanage a long time ago. God saved me from hell. So uh, everything from now forward is, and she's 31 years of age and a beautiful girl serving God fearlessly 
field, I mean literally in the middle of a war, feeding and caring for people. And they sent me this video. I think you're going to love it. Watch this. No human should ever witness the atrocities left behind by the Russian army in the last four months. Roads, airports, schools lying in ruins, hundreds of thousands of people living underground in shelters with no electricity, food or water, widows, orphans, children who have seen their fathers being killed and their mothers being raped in front of their eyes. Hundreds of thousands being displaced inside the country. Hundreds of thousands being stuck in a dangerous place, lacking basic supplies to flee or just to live. Millions of people living in fear every day hearing the loud noise of the sirens, the bombs hitting the buildings, knowing that today might be their last day, their last meal, their last breath, with no one left to carry enough to bury their bodies from under the ruins. Women, the elderly, people with disabilities and children are left to survive on their own. With their breadwinner fighting for the country, the most vulnerable are fighting their own battle to stay alive. As our team was driving across the Ukrainian villages, there was poverty, there were sirens, there was fear, but there was also hope. There was gratitude that someone took the risk to come and visit them. As we were distributing food, we received flowers and gifts. We cried as we shared a moment of hope in which we talked about God, who is the only thing left to hold on to right now. Heavy bombings continue every day in Ukraine. They continued as we celebrated the independence of the United States. And they will continue tomorrow as we go on with our lives. Almost every second, another child will become a refugee of the war. Every day, lives will continue to be taken away by guns, by poverty, by fear, by hunger. We might not be able to stop the war, but we can help a family left on their own, a village, five villages to survive this war, to give hope, to show them we care. He cares.
Oh, to be his hand extended, reaching out to the oppressed. All the young folk you watch there are rescued. The rescued have become the rescuers. I think that's crazy. I'm talking about orphans driving the vans, the cargo vans that we have in Moldova, going through the border, hours of driving, being stopped, checkpoints all the way down through to Odessa. Once a week we go to Kiev and to Erpen, which is 12, hour, 12 hours away. And uh, these amazing young people. I, I honestly don't see American kids of their age doing what they do. The responsibility that they take on to care for other people. And we just need your help. We need your help in several ways. Um, the, the, the foundation of our ministry, the thing that keeps us going on a day-to-day -day basis, that keeps the houses open, that keeps the kids going to school, that pays for the tuition, that, that cares for them on a daily basis, these orphans that have come to us, that's being provided for by people giving a dollar a day. A dollar a day won't change your life. A dollar a day sure has changed theirs. And if you'd like to help us becoming a monthly sponsor, a dollar a day, you can change a life for a dollar a day. And, and, um, and then these trips that we're taking, it costs us to go from Kishnev down to um, Kiev and Erpen. Just the food purchase that we have, not all the other supplies, but the food purchase costs around $15,000. You may be watching today and you can say, well, Philip, I want to sponsor an entire convoy of vans to go down into Kiev and Erpen where these people are struggling so desperately. And uh, just whatever the Lord lays upon your heart. I know we're in the middle of summer. Right now in huge concrete walled and ceiling buildings, warehouses, these folks live. They sleep on a mattress that's given to them. And uh, they spend their whole life, they've got no money, they, got, they can't go anywhere. They're stuck in this great big place, cold, no, no privacy, nowhere. That's, there you go, that's, that's their life right there. They can't spend any money. If they have money, it won't work. <laughs> they, are, they are an impossible situation. And we've given away thousands of blankets to these folks. You say, well, Philip, it's warm, the, the blankets. In those buildings at nighttime, it gets cold because it's all concrete. But more symbolically than that, those blankets, we had them, made, we had them specifically made for us in Moldova. And they're heavy quilts, as you can see, there's two of our kids holding them. And the reason why we had them made so big is a mom can take her kids and at nighttime her husband's in, in, in Ukraine fighting. She doesn't know if he's alive or dead. She's stuck in this camp, this refugee camp. And she's got no identity anymore. She's just another bed in that other great big building. But at nighttime she can take that blanket and wrap that blanket around a little family. And the blanket has become the walls of her new reality our new home. And we need, uh, you, you may not think this right now, it being August, but we are now already talking about October coming. When October comes, the weather breaks and cold weather comes. So August, September, October. And uh, so we are, we are really believing God for folk to stand behind us and believe God with us. We, we, ha we ha buy these blankets in bundles of 1,000. And they've cost us $20 per blanket. And so let, maybe you want to, to, to buy a thousand blankets for these folks or just one. Whatever the Lord challenges you to do, please do it. We need your help right this minute. Our address is really simple. The Orphan's Hands, P.O. Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. The Orphan's Hands, P.O. Box 25, 37716. You can also go right now online and you can give dailyfaith.tv. Just that, that's our address, dailyfaith.tv. Or if you wish, you can call us, 833-DAILYFAITH. 833-DAILYFAITH. And anyone that gives a first-time gift, let me get this book here. Um, this book is called Our Bummer Lamb. A bummer lamb is an, a lamb that's being abandoned by its mom. If the shepherd doesn't intervene, the lamb will get kicked and butted by its mother until it dies. And um, Andrew was our bummer lamb, and Andrew was the, the miracle of this story of how we adopted him is in this book. If ever you want to read a story of miracles that will make you laugh and cry and shake your head at the grace of God, you will need this book. And any gift you give, whatever you would like to help us with, we'll send you a bummer lamb book as our thank you for caring for us and caring for them through us. 
and we appreciate that so much. I am I am so sorry it's taking so long today to get to our guest because I believe he's got something very special to say to us. Pastor Rick Long, a pastor's Grace Church in Arvada, Colorado, with his wife Shelley, and um, he's written a book entitled Grace Happens. And boy, if ever I love a subject, I love talking with Grace. And let me tell you something, and I'm going to tell him at the same time, when I got this book put into my hand, I thought, my gracious me, that is a, that is a weighty book. This is not a book of fluff and puff with pages and half pages. This is a book that is packed with the grace of God, and I absolutely love it. We're going to talk about that in a wee while. Rick, thank you so much for joining us today in Daily Faith. I am honored to have you with us. I'm sorry it took so long to get with you, but we are fighting, literally fighting a war um, of lack and, and yeah. abandonment and care in Ukraine and Moldova. Tell us about your church. Tell us about you and, and what God's been doing with you in Colorado. Well, thank you so much, Philip. And uh, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed to be here and to be able to even witness what you are all doing uh, in, uh, in really in Ukraine. I think it's on all of our hearts and minds and in yeah. our prayers. And as a ministry, we participated with our missionaries in uh, Poland to help Marvelous. the refugees, yes. over a million and a half of them. And, and I'm very okay. excited as I talked to you about that mm -hmm. earlier yes. to continue our help. Uh, something about Grace Church that is evident in everything that we do is that our, our people are just committed to the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, salvation by faith alone in Christ alone is, is how we receive that Hallelujah. grace of God. I mean, there's Nothing we can do to earn it. Nothing it's we can do to <laughs> sustain it. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it is It is yeah. a, a gift of God. And when people understand that, that's when the transforming power of the Holy Spirit really takes over your life Absolutely. and changes you from the inside out. And, you know, I think that grace happens is a, it's a, a picture of really 33 and a half years of ministry here at Grace. I started the church with a good friend uh, who's also the president of Dare to Share Ministries, ministry that trains teenagers how to share their faith around the United States and yeah. other parts of the world. And, and of course, with my wife, but it was always a, a vision that God had laid on my heart since I was uh, 13 years old. I mean, I've just believed we, we could start a church that was grace oriented and that the gospel would be predominant and that it would be a church for everybody. You know, it's a it's a very simple mission statement here at Grace. We're hope for everyone and a home for anyone. And yeah. um, we have seen that. We've had over 12,000 baptisms uh, in this wow. ministry. We've okay. seen literally millions of people reach with the gospel. We have 58 churches in the Amazon rainforest with an indigenous tribe uh, called the Shawi, beautiful people. And we've We've trained them. I remember when I, I traveled to the Amazon rainforest in uh, 1997 with my good friend who um, was my co-pastor and really dear friend, another uh, pastor who was our first elder, uh, Pastor Jim Maloff, and he passed last year. It's been a year since his passing. Um, he had fought cancer for 20 years and unfortunately went into the hospital, got, got uh, COVID and oh. was unable to oh. fight it. And it was a... It was a devastating loss, but when he and I traveled to uh, the rainforest, we stayed for almost a month in this village wow. in the upper tributary of uh, Peru, right where the Amazon begins. And I fell in love with these people. And I thought, you know, if the Holy Spirit can transform me and the Holy Spirit transforms everyone that, that he invades their life, uh, then he can transform these indigenous and they can pastor their churches. So now we have uh, all indigenous pastors. Our missionaries don't raise support. They're full time. And we just equip them. They, a lot of times they use my messages and our series and they translate them into Shawi. So we're passionate about the good news of the gospel. And we believe that every time the doors are open here at Grace, which is seven days a week, that the yeah. gospel message must be predominant. And that's where Grace Happens comes from. There's there's over 90 stories in the book of God's transforming power, and he gets all the glory. You know, if he can use a, a goofball like me, he can use absolutely anybody. And I know people say that, <laughs> but it's true, isn't it, Philip? I mean, he, oh my he uses us, oh. and it's a beautiful thing. 
beautiful. The thing is, people, people have got to understand that if you're watching us today, it isn't, it isn't how clever you are that counts. It's how faithful you are, how willing you are Amen. to say to God, here I am, send me. And grace, and, yeah. and, and, and as you're talking just now, I can hear some pastors saying, oh, is this another um, cheap grace? One of the funniest and yeah. ir most ironic statements I've ever heard in my life is when they talk about, oh, this, this guy preaches cheap grace. There is no such thing as cheap grace. No such no. thing as cheap no. grace. Grace, no. grace is the most viable commodity that's ever taken place in the history of mankind. And that when Jesus right. paid for the price, I, you'll never, you'll never work, you'll never be good enough. You'll never be good That's enough. Right. It's all through grace. And Martin Luther, uh, I, I referred to him just a wee while ago. He was, he was trying to work himself and beat himself to God. And the, and the revelation right. came, the just shall live by faith. And the grace of God just shall live by supersedes. Faith. Yep. And if you're watching today and you are in a mess that you can't resolve and you think there's no way out of this. I've got news for you. Grace is sufficient for you. His grace. You might run out of my grace. My grace doesn't go very far sometimes and I, I, and I apologize for that. But I'll tell you what, I've never plumbed the, the bottom of the depth of God's grace and, and I am amazing. Let me, this book that we refer to it is called Grace Happens. And I want you to watch this um, short promo for it let you to understand what it's about. Watch this. Welcome to the 40 Days of Grace. You know, there's nothing more powerful, more life-changing, and more needed today than a clear-cut understanding of God's grace. Wouldn't you agree? So for the next 42 days, you'll get a chance to hear countless stories of God's miraculous, life-changing grace. Grace happens, and I want you to tell us, explain, a, a lot of times, we have, we have a, an idea of grace, and we've got a, an idea of favor, an idea of mercy, an idea of, of some kind of vague concept of it. But tell us how pivotal and how powerful is grace that works in us, through us, through the cross, through the blood of Jesus, through his, 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 the, the price he paid, and um, tell us how you put it all together in this book so someone can understand and say, I need this book in my life. Well, it really strikes me as you were talking, Philip, and I was just, you know, amen to everything. I want to kind of communicate it this way. You know, grace is not cheap. You, you made it very clear. It costs God everything. everything. And the cost to us is our faith. It is believing and receiving that salvation and then that exchange that, that took place 2,000 years ago is put to our account. What cheapens grace is when people say, well, that's great that Jesus died, but you got to go to church and you got to give but. up your bad habits and you got to start this. And that's what cheapens grace. Mm -hmm. Because if I give a gift to my children and they say, oh, dad, really, you know what? Here, here's 50 bucks. That cheapens the gift. What, what actually makes it so unbelievably priceless is that God said, I'm giving it all to you by faith. And then once I understand that, what grace happens is about is people who went, wait a second, I get to serve God not to get to heaven. I get to serve God as a life of thanksgiving because I'm going to heaven. And wow. that kind of transformation wow is what really changes people. I grew up, and I'm very grateful for the ministry my dad put me in, the stories in the book. Um, he was dying, but God bless him. He was miraculously saved by the healing power of God. He's been a pastor in my church. He's worked for me in the ministry for over 30 years. And my dad put us in a Christian school. Uh, he was he thought he was going to die. And um, it, was a, it was a hard... It, you know, transfer for me. I mean, really transition was difficult and there was a lot of good. I really developed my passion for the gospel and evangelism. 
But there was also this mentality, now that you've come to know Jesus and you're going to heaven, uh, cut your hair, don't listen to this, and don't go to these places. It was very legalistic. And so what I really wanted to help people understand from this book is that when you get the clearest perspective of grace you can get. Now, none of us are going to fully understand God's grace. It's going to take all eternity just to understand how much a holy, righteous God loves us. But when you get the best human perspective of grace, then you go, I want to serve God with everything I've got. I became a purpose-driven pastor in 1995 for Rick Warren. I started working as the first um, purpose-driven coach. I taught at many of the conferences over the years. And I have a passion for pastors. I've been able to train around eight or 9,000 around the world through a lot of different avenues. And what I always try to help pastors understand, and it's not because I have it all figured out or I'm some world-class pastor. It's because they need encouragement, that they're in the spiritual war every day. And I try to help them understand, guys, if you want to see a renewal, a revival in your church, start preaching the salvation message Yes. at the end of every service and give a call to salvation. You know, Philip, it's shocking, and you know this as well as I do, that the majority of churches in America have evangelism weeks or they yeah. preach the gospel on Easter. But then the rest of the time, they just sort of go, well, I, you know, I'm preaching to Christians. How do you know you're preaching to Christians? Every yeah. week, now today, especially with social media, we have thousands of people that don't know Jesus. And I'll tell you this quick story. I was teaching at the conference in Purpose Driven um, Conference in uh, 2001. And I'm teaching pastors how to share their faith. And I catch a glimpse of a man I learned later was in his 60s. And uh, he, was, he was crying as I was teaching them how to share their faith at the end of a message. Because... What, what Rick and the team really believed is that a lot of pastors don't know how to transition out of a message to the believer and transition to a message for the unbeliever in a kind of seamless way. And so I'm training and I get done and I, I walk down from the stage and I see this man still sitting there crying. I said, hey, brother, I'm, I'm Rick. I see you're as passionate about the gospel as I am. And he raised his hand to me and he said, I'm Phil from Philadelphia. Now, I'll never forget that because Phil from Philadelphia yeah. is easy to remember. Yeah. And I said, well, you you must be as passionate about the gospel as I am. He said, Pastor Rick, I am, but I'm doing something wrong. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, you know, people have gotten saved in my youth ministry. They've been saved in my children's ministry. He said, I have a church of about 800 Presbyterian church in Philadelphia. And he said, I've not seen one convert in my 10 years in the church. And I said, well, tell me what you're doing. And so as he began to explain what he was doing, I realized that he was preaching the gospel through um, uh, more of a, a broad paintbrush. You know, during his message, he would talk about the cross, maybe, uh, you know, he'd talk about faith in Christ. But what he wasn't realizing is that a lost person, according to 1 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15, the natural man does not perceive the things of God. He cannot understand them. They're no. spiritually discerned. You, you need the Holy Spirit. And so he, he wasn't really sharing a clear, concise gospel. So I said, did this training make sense? He said it did. So two weeks later, uh, we had six services I preached uh, every weekend for about 17 years. And I would come over to a modular office just to rest between services. And I put my feet up on the, the desk and I get in a, a message. This is back in the days of, you know, instant message. And it dinged on my, my computer and it was, it was Pastor Phil. And he sent this, he said, Pastor Rick Long, today was the single greatest day of my ministry experience. I had two people raise their hands and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And he said, I want to thank you for sharing this with me. And I sent back, brother, what you did is you preached Romans 1 16, 
For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God Absolutely. unto salvation. Absolutely. And so when we communicate the gospel that, that we are sinners and God is a holy God and he has never sinned and he has created us for purpose, but we were born depraved. We were born in sin and there's nothing we can do to wash it away. No works of righteousness. So Jesus came into the world. He lived a perfect life never sinned and he went to a cross he was that lamb uh, yes. that went to the cross and gave his life for us and when he died he died not only for our past sins he died for our present sins and our future sins because how many of our sins were in the future when jesus died all of them and three days later he rose again and he said believe in me and i will give to you everlasting life trust in me and you will go to heaven and then he invades our life and he transforms us. That is the grace of God. And that's really what our ministry has been about. Uh, mm -hmm. We're a church. When you walk in the doors, you're welcome. No matter where you're from, we say, bring all your hurts, habits, and hangups. And we get to see God transform people. So that, that burdens me because you and I both know household salvation is what's going to transform people. Absolutely. Uh, when, when people walk Absolutely. into a church, that's a that's a miracle, right? But when you can train and equip your believers to go out to their jobs, to school, because the church is a holy huddle. You get together, you huddle up, you have the, the unbelievers that you, that you share the gospel with, you train the believer, and then they have to go out and play the game. And living that life of faithfulness, because that's what we're called to, as you said. We're not called to be successful. We're called to be faithful. We go out in the world and, and speak the gospel. That's where people get saved. And like mm. you said, if one person, if every single person in our church goes out and shares their faith with one person, you've doubled your church and you have that ability to now reach more. So we're all about that. We're about, you know, win them, uh, dunk them, train them and send them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our mission, you know, just keep so, it rolling. So that's what this, we're about. Explain. So in grace happens, a, a, a pastor can actually conduct, can conduct a campaign in his church. Is this what you're saying? So yes. this is the, yes. this is the so, materials mm -hmm. that you give a pastor a material, like in our church that, that we attend here locally in Tennessee. Uh, I, I was talking to the pastor just a, a begin the year. And I said, man, I says, you know, let's believe God for a hundred souls saved this year. And I think, Amen. I think we're like 70 or 80 so far. We're going to far exceed a hundred souls. Fabulous. But what happens is whenever Fabulous. you put a focus on something, a lot of times, and as you're talking about this, this pastor Phil from Philadelphia, he, he, he spoke about a general cross and a general Jesus and a general sin and a general everything else. Yeah. But if there's someone sitting in the church yeah. and, and they're burdened down with their own sin, you don't have to tell a sinner how bad they are. They know how bad they are. What they're looking for is a way out exactly. of where they are and an answer. And, and in Grace Happens, yeah. it's a 40-day campaign that includes video That's right. and also a town hall. Explain, explain this to me. Uh, so that folk can, can hear what it, yeah. what it yep. is. For sure. What I, what I love so much about it is we can provide the pastor with as many books as he wants. We would encourage, you know, all of the people in the church, like we've seen with a number of churches that have done it, to get Grace Happens so that people can read the daily devotion. If you've ever been a part of a 40 Days of Purpose campaign, it's very similar oh, to that. Everybody yeah. reads the same devotional every day. And then on the weekends, I've written seven messages so that you have your celebration weekend as well. And any pastor is welcome to all of that. We'll get them the sermons uh, in script form, in video. And then they can, you know, they can work on it themselves, tailor it for their ministry. And then we have video uh, that they can utilize if they want to create their own video they can use ours as a template if you got a great multimedia department like we do and you want to create your own videos it's a lot of work but you can do it otherwise you can use ours we've tried sure. to make it as general as possible but we have a lot of you know forums and um, platforms where you hear from a number of people about how grace uh, has impacted their life and so it is an it is a complete 
spiritual campaign. And if you're a pastor and you have never done this before, I promise you yes. it will change your church. It, it's revolutionary. Yes. yes. And that's the thing is, if you're, Absolutely. a lot of pastors, so, yep. have the, a lot of pastors, uh, Rick, have the burden to do this, but they don't know the how to do it. So yep. what you're saying is that you've taken the how right. question out of it. You're going to say, here's the book. Get this for your team or whatever, whoever's yep. part, participating in this thing. Go through it together. And that's accountability. Yep. That, what it means is if everyone's reading a 40-day book, going through the thing on a daily reading basis, yes. everyone knows we better get this done because, well, I'm going to be, we're, going to, we're going to be talking about it amongst ourselves. So what that does, it puts discipline into the group. And, and but at the end yep. of the at the end of the day, what you could see is you could turn a group of people, however many there is in this group, you could turn them into a soul winning machine. And and the Bible yes. says he that winneth souls is wise. The reason why your church exists yes. is not just to have a club of bless me people. This is not to have That's vacation right. Bible schools and and whatever kind of club you can yep. start. The point of the church is to win the lost. These other things are me mechanisms Amen. to bring them in. Our church, is, every year, our church has a car show. And hundreds of people that would never, ever yep. go near the Me church too. bring their old cars to, to show right. off their old cars. And the gospels preach to them. Yep. So I, I encourage you today to get this book, Grace Happens. And I mean this, when you get it, you think, my goodness, that is, that's, a, that's a book of value. Yeah. And... and Talk to, your, talk to your team and see how many books you can order and then get the videos from Rick and you can start changing your church. I, I, in fact, I, I say this all the time that your church is one soul away from doubling. If you can turn your church into swing, That's right. if, That's if right. everybody, I, I was praying one day and the, and the Holy Spirit said to me, are you the bride of Christ? And I said, oh, I'm the bride of Christ. And as quick as a flash, the Holy Ghost said, well, brides of babies. The proof of being a bride is you ha you produce, yeah. and and if you could get That's your right. church, That's the right. bride of Christ, to start thinking along the lines of reproduction, you the, the greatest yeah. resource. Now listen, Pastor, watching us today, the greatest harvest field in your life is sitting looking at you every Sunday morning, yes. because the connections yes. of their life. I think I read somewhere one time that each person has an approximate circle of 250 colleagues, friends, acquaintances, people they know. Yeah. If you can get them turned on right. to becoming grace points, gr pulling people towards the grace of God, yep. there is no telling what God could do in your church. And um, how, how do folk get, how oh. do folk get in contact with you, Rick, to get a hold of this material? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, first, let me say this. Uh, I'm so passionate about pastors that I don't want them to miss out on this because they're afraid of cost or anything like that. They can they can reach out to us. We're not about we're not trying to promote Grace Church. We're trying to prom promote the grace of God. And yes. so they can reach out to us at gracechurchco.com and just say, I'm pastor so and so. I'd like to do the the 40 day campaign of Grace Happens. And we'll get you all set up in order to do this. I'm also getting ready to put this book on Audible and uh, translate it into Spanish, especially for our Spanish-speaking uh, countries that we are ministering to. But, you know, you said something, uh, Philip, that really, I mean, it just it struck me a moment ago. The average church in America only sees two converts every three years. Two converts every three years. Right. Today, after COVID... After COVID, the average church size is 77 people. Now, we are, we are losing the war of attrition because yeah. people are moving over and they're go getting away from fellowship. And I believe as pastors, we have to be as current as we can possibly be. I mean, we are on every platform possible. We have viewers all over the world. But churches, as you and I know, it's not a TV show. There's a purpose for TV shows, sure. but church is about bringing the community together. So when you see, you know, during COVID, I had to take some steps I never wanted to take. We opened June 7th of 2020. We were trying to feed 10,000 people. 
care for people. We had nobody here. And um, there were a lot of things that I was involved in that, you know, uh, that situation and not COVID, but really the lockdowns led me to. But what really saddened me was that in my community alone, there are 77 evangelical churches. And after a year, over 40 of them were still closed. And I think a lot of pastors started to go, well, this is kind of easy. I can stay home. I can video. I can kind of mail it in. But I think there were also a lot of fears. We understand that. A lot of older congregations totally get it. But as we've been trying over the last year to help pastors around the United States really come out of the, the lockdown mentality, I'm finding that the church has been crippled even worse. Satan's plan has been masterful. And I want to try and encourage these churches to build back in a very strong and grace-oriented way. And I want you to know if you're a pastor that's getting discouraged, don't get discouraged. This is my 37th year in ministry, and God is about to do something great. He takes us through those valleys. As you said a moment ago, Philip, he uh, disguises his blessings in our tr our trials. Last sure week I does. preached on Daniel, how to thrive and succeed in an unstable world. And yeah. Daniel is a picture of that. You, you trust God, you can see the world transformed from right where you're at. So stay faithful and know that you do have advocates in Philip, myself, and sure. uh, not just Daily Faith TV, but, but the ministries like us that wanna help you be successful. And for everybody else watching, um, you know, I, I go back to that word success. Faithfulness is success in God's uh, work. And for all of you who may be watching as Christians, um, you know, you need to understand this, that what changes the world is the gospel. As much exactly. as we do for orphans and we do for the, the hurting gospel. and widows and all it's of that is... It's the gospel that changes gospel. them. I don't want to dress people up for hell. Mm -mm. I want to bring them to salvation. And so, uh, you know, be faithful where you're at to communicate this. If you can say Christ died for our sins, according to the Apostle Paul, those are the most important words. You can see transformation. You can't, you, you can't have said it better than that. And if you're, if you're watching today, pastor or not a pastor, don't you quit Write down today is a day and I'm not going to quit on this day because God's grace is sufficient. You can purchase Grace Happens by sure. Pastor Rick Long by going to Grace Church Co. Co for Colorado dot store. Grace Church Co dot store. Our time is gone for today. It has been a delight. We're going to do this again, Rick, if you don't mind coming back and being being love it. pestered by some Scottish folk. <laughs> Thank you again for, for <laughs> being love with it. us today. And uh, I encourage you, if you're a pastor watching just now, I encourage you to get in contact with Rick. Um, it's a great church in Arvada in Colorado. And uh, let me put up the address, the, the email address one more time for me, www.gracechurchco.com. And um, you can get a, this book, Grace Happens, and the entire 40-day um, series that you can involve your entire church in if you're a pastor watching and if you're an individual per person watching you can still get this book and apply it to your life and um, and I'll promise you this it will change your life because uh, God is in the life-changing business that's what grace is all about thank you pastor Rick for being with us today we appreciate you so much and we look forward to doing great things together for the kingdom of God I have a feeling I found a friend for the future because uh, I love people of like mind Absolutely. and like spirit. Listen, watch us every day at this time. We want to be a part of your life. Daily faith is here for you. And we want you to know that God loves you and he, uh, he, he understands your circumstance and he's going to see you through all the way to victory in the name of Jesus. Pray for us that as we battle this battle of, uh, in, in Ukraine and Moldova, that God provide the means to help us. You are God's grace point in the world you live in. Thank you so much for watching us today in Daily Faith. We'll see you again real soon. Same time, God bless you, bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, 
to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their Heavenly Father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to www.dailyfaith.tv or by writing to Post Office Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention, Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716.